In Indian chess, we have two kinds of players. One who keeps playing in India, he plays the national championship, the rating tournaments, the age categories and everything. And the other is who doesn't play much in India, travels abroad and plays in a lot of international events, strong events, let's say the Gibraltar Open, Abu Dhabi Open, Dubai Open. And these two players are quite different, you know. Uh, the one who keeps playing in India uh, becomes like a tough fighter. He is trying to, you know, uh, fight in every round. The conditions always are not so great, so he's adapted to that. Uh, while the guy who is playing all the time in international events uh, gets great conditions to stay and everything, but at the same time. Uh, he is learning a lot of things about high quality chess because he sees great GMs in action. For example, if you go to Gibraltar, you will see Anand or um, even Aronian or Nakamura, all these top players playing. You, you watch them analyze. And so there are these two different kinds of players. And when, when they both face each other, uh, it's a very interesting duel actually. So, in the seventh round of the Isle of Man Masters, the game was against Pragnananda, who is, I would say, more towards the second category, uh, and Ravi Teja, who is more towards the first category. Now, Ravi Teja is an IM. He's played a lot of tournaments in India. Of course, he's traveled abroad as well, but I, I remember him uh, as a player who wins a lot of rating tournaments in India, very strong, uh, excellent uh, at analysis and has a good opening repertoire. Uh, he also won the national championships, national challengers in 2016 ahead of many grandmasters. While uh, Pragnananda needs no explanation, but the curious thing about Prag is that he hasn't played in India since a long time according to me. I, I try to remember, but um, there are no real events he played recently. He got all his three IM norms out of India. He got all three of his GM norms out of India. Uh, and now in Kolkata, when all the super GMs would be playing in a month, uh, he would be playing against them. So when these two players uh, were paired against each other, I was very interested to see as to what would happen, how would the game progress. And uh, let's have a look. Now, in this game, we have something very special. Uh, Pragnananda played excellently. So, I'm going to ask you to, you know, guess his moves from one point. Okay, from move to, I think, 11 until 21. You have 10 moves, uh, 11 moves there and 10 points. So, if you are able to score 10 out of 10, you, you played like Prague. Uh, if you are not able to, then let's say 8, 7, whatever it is, uh, you, can, you can judge yourself. So let's go over the game. Uh, the first move was e4 and uh, Ravi Teja loves to play the Karo Khan. He played c6, d4, d5, e5. This is Pragnananda's favorite move against the Karo Khan. He pushes his pawn to e5 gains more space. As a Karo Khan player myself, I think this is the most ambitious attempt for white to get an advantage. Now bishop went to f5, h4. Uh, when white plays the move e5 and gains space, I think it's important that black prevents further gaining of space with the move h5. Uh, this I had explained once in my annotations that when white plays his knight to c3, you take take bishop f5, knight g3 and when white plays h4, here you can afford to play h6, give white further space uh, like this because in the center white doesn't have a pawn, you know, it got exchanged. But when there is a pawn on, uh, sorry, pawn on h4 here, it makes sense to push your pawn to h5 and stop white from gaining further space. c4, e6, knight c3, knight e7. Very, everything is very standard. 
and the old way to play in this position was bishop to g5, uh, white would play this and then black would take bishop d takes c4, bishop c4, knight d7, knight g2 and I loved the way in which black would play after f6, ef, gf, bishop e3, knight b6 and here there are two moves bishop b3 and bishop d3 and I would recommend you to look at both these moves through two games of Carpo who was black if white plays bishop d3 this is non Carpo excellent game by black and if bishop b3 it was um, Ma Magem Badals against Carpo so this line I think is very very playable for black I've played it myself and black does excellently so instead of going bishop to g5 here the new idea is knight g2 and this is essentially a pawn sacrifice I think what Ravi should have uh, done here was to play knight d7 knight g3 bishop g6 bishop g5 and queen b6 after queen d2 you can take here and play long castle I think this line is playable for black there, there are no real problems black is doing completely fine but what he did was he was ambitious he took d into c4 here and then after knight g3 he played his bishop back to g6 if I'm not mistaken I had one of the games against a strong Indian GM uh, Ashwin Jairam where I played the move b5 protecting the pawn on c4 uh, I think I was very very ambitious at that point in terms of assessing this position it looks not so great I mean the move b5 but okay bishop g6 we are slowly coming closer to move number 11 so get ready guys uh, white could have taken the pawn on c4 when maybe the game could go knight f5, bishop g5, bishop e7, knight into uh, f5, bishop f5, queen d2, knight d7 with unclear I mean this is maybe slight edge for white but nothing special but Prague went bishop g5 he didn't take the pawn on c4 queen b6 bishop into c4 now this position has been played before Nepomniashi has played it with white and knight d7 would have been normal play after this black could have castled and we get into that same line but uh, Ravi Teja said why not take the pawn on b2 you know it's a free pawn the king is still in the center rook b1 is impossible because bishop into b1 is hanging queen into c3 is hanging how can it be bad and so my question to you is it's white to play you are in Pragnananda shoes what will you do here pause the video and try to think you have one point here at stake well I hope that you were able to find the move knight ce4 not so difficult yet and I'm sure most of you got it the key idea is that uh, there is knight d6 check in the air so for example if you were to play queen b4 queen d2 you can never take this guy because of this check and it looks very strong so knight c4 very natural you save your knight and you move ahead okay so black could have taken on e4 knight e4 knight f5 and that, this was a possible way to play but in the game Ravi played knight f5 again a very logical move you are attacking the pawn on d4 it just seems correct so once again for one point what would you play here as white okay I hope that you were able to give development great amount of importance and you castled here because that's the right move that's the move that Prague played I think I could even give you one point for the move rook b1 here because it is not a bad move at all uh, after queen into d4 you can just castle and still you have this beautiful 
development all your pieces are excellently developed and you are doing really well but castle is in the spirit of the position so one point for castle knight takes g3 before you make an automatic recapture think for your move it's white to play here the third point can you get it can you play like pragnananda well a natural recapture would be knight takes g3 but after bishop e7 already i i would say black is out of the woods to a great extent because rook b1 which is such a powerful move is now stopped because bishop devil uh, controls that square so the right move here is to play rook to b1 you are a piece down and it's quite possible that black can sacrifice his queen now he has a rook and a piece and then he can take another piece but after queen into b7 it's all over you see this bishop is a monster cutting this position cutting across the position this bishop is amazing always ready to sacrifice and you have queen attacking a8 and c8 this is all over so ravi teja played queen a3 which is i think the most logical move and here you go again for the fourth point in the position what should white play here well once you have started playing like tal you must play like tal yeah so after queen a3 f takes g3 was a beautiful move by prag now i'm not sure if all of this is preparation for pragnananda i have my doubts he is not a guy who prepares openings very deeply he has been working on the same but to expect him to be well prepared until this point is difficult you are sacrificing your knight on e4 you're giving it up and also queen into g3 is possible so i would say knight takes g3 was also fine here because you are giving up your rook however development is just so so important here you have all the pieces out and b7 is so soft so after queen b4 queen c2 i have a feeling that white will convert this edge uh, advantage rook b1 you have d5 break at some point so this should be better but prags f takes g3 was just so spectacular now ravi took on e4 he didn't see anything wrong well i'm sure he he knew what's coming up but he thought he can he can survive this position so he took on e4 and now the crucial move of the game what would you play here as white i hope that you were able to find this super aggressive move which was rook takes f7 fantastic play the point is very clear after you see it after king into f7 you go rook takes b7 you can even insert rook b3 at some point but i think rook b7 is great and the nice line is that after first king can go either to e8 or g6 i think knight d7 doesn't make sense you just take it so king after rook b7 king e8 first and here it was important to calculate this line queen f1 threatening a mate on f7 and after bishop f5 i hope you spotted it yes you are right queen into f5 and after e f5 bishop f7 ooh that's a beautiful mate so after rook b7 the other move is king g6 but now bishop into e6 bishop f7 is a big threat which cannot really be saved let's say knight d7 rook b7 just loses a piece and after knight a6 bishop f7 king h7 you can take here and if king f5 queen f1 and this looks also completely devastating so rook into f7 was a move which had to be spotted the main idea was to get the rook on the 7th the other rook is joining in on the 7th rank this looks super strong but 
Ravi had an idea and which was queen into g3. He said, yeah, I know that your rook is in the game. You want the other rook to come in. But hey, look at your pawn on g2. Be careful. That's also soft. So here you have the move here, white to play. What would you play here? Well, I hope that you didn't fall for the trap of queen to f1 in this position because after queen f1, black has a very powerful strike which is bishop into g2. Queen is attacked and if you take, I can take and king f7 and the position is unclear. So, Prague went for rook f2, very nice move, one point if you spotted it, sometimes Coming back is the hardest, you are making a retreating move and you are now just a piece down, you know, in this position but you have this rook eyeing here, this rook open here, bishops crossing across in, oops, that was a wavered bishop, bishops crossing in the position and this queen is very nice, it can go to the queen side, it can also move to the king side. You know, it can go anywhere it likes. Now b7 is hanging, so b5 was played and once again the ball is in your court. This is already the seventh point in the position. If I am not mistaken, what should white play? Yeah, I hope that you were able to spot queen to e1. This is a great move with two threats, one is to take on e4, the other is to at some point sacrifice the rook and take the queen via discovered attack. So in the game bishop f5 was played but if you take bishop into b1 then I think the right move is not to play rook f8 which is also possible but queen b1 and you want to checkmate your opponent, you don't want to really win the queen. So this is already very tough to defend, impossible and if he takes b into c4, once again not rook f8 but to play queen into e4, queen g6 is a deadly threat and this is already mating. So Ravi played bishop to f5 and Prague was in his element here, it's white to play, pause the video, what would you do? Right, the right move was bishop takes e6, taking the pawn on e6 and Ravi had to take the rook because if you were to play bishop takes e6, then in this position I can just simply take on f8 and capture this and I am materially much better also this position is completely winning for white. So bishop into e6. Black took on f2, I am not going to give you a point for this move now, queen into f2, bishop e6 and now the ninth point here, what should white play? It's completely better, I can understand but I can also imagine a situation that if you are careless, the bishop could sit on d5, knight could come to d7, bishop e7 and black can fight on. So it's important to be quick and in this position. Prague went for the move d5, excellent chess because after bishop d5 you have queen f5 getting into the position, knight d7 you can go check, bishop f7 you can take on c6 you are already broken through. In the game c into d5 was played and this is the final point now, what would you play here as white? If you find this I think you have been able to finish the game. Yes, the right move is queen to c2, looking to enter at c7 and queen g6 check. After this, you cannot protect everything and after bishop e7, bishop takes e7, king e7, queen c7, it was already game over, you know. So 10 questions were asked to you, did, were you able to play like Prague, how many moves did you find? Please write in the comment section so that we know uh, how close you are to Prague but it was fantastic play. Now comes the very very scary part I would say that until this point the game has been played in correspondence chess 
way back in 2015. It was the game Sherbakov Y against Balta. They both played it through over email and there are high possibilities that Prague didn't know about this game. But there's also this possibility that maybe he knew it. And of course, uh, I'm going to ask him whenever I meet him this question. Uh, maybe I'll ask to his coach as well, RB Ramesh. But um, it's scary, yes. Uh, this is such a beautiful game, but it could all be prepared or, you know, ha have, has been rehearsed before. Now, this correspondence database is something very important that I would like to inform you about. It is used by top players in preparation because they are some kind of secret games. You don't find them in the databases on, let's say, online databases anywhere. On live database in Chessbase, you do find uh, games. But there's also a correspondence database which is sold by Chessbase, which could be useful in your preparation. I know players like Shashi Kiran who, who are very strong and I'm sure even Vishy Anand or Vidit or Hari Krishna, everyone, they use these games to find some new ideas in openings, the correspondence games. And so that can be a good thing to add to something that you want to use while preparing. Now let's finish off the game very quickly because white is already better. Um, knight d7 was played in the correspondence game, Ravi played bishop d7. Prague went e6, natural move, you can't take king e6 because rook e1 and the queen and rook just checkmate, this is textbook stuff. Rook c8, queen b7 and he picked up the rook, now materially he's just much better. Queen against two pieces just, this is simple and Prague managed to finish off the game well. Here Ravi resigned. But fantastic game by Pragnananda, taking nothing away from the young boy. He attacked relentlessly and he played a great game of chess. Kudos to him and I hope that you enjoyed this video.